I don't want to die. I'm Hatsi Maori, but I don't, don't want to die. So what happened was... I saw somebody say in the comments the other day that we're all cousins or cousins cousins or cousins cousins of cousins. You wasn't playing, was you? Oh, dudes and dudettes, welcome back to the channel, man. Sincerely appreciate you being here with me on today. Part two of Stan Walker's documentary story. Let's go. This guy's spirit wells me with good feelings and tears. The very first thing he said after he got out of a surgery that could have ended his life was a joke. Bruh, these are the kind of people that you should desire to have around you. And this is the type of person you should endeavor to be. <sighs> <laughs> this kid's an absolute clown. What's the word for clown in Maori? In Spanish, it's payaso. So that's what I would have just called him. But y'all wouldn't have known what that meant. So what do y'all call clowns or funny people? Or or what would you have said to that about him? What word do you, do you use for that? Hours you were up there, six and a half hours, something like that. I was like, oh my gosh. So long. How good is that? Ah, you know, they didn't have to cut you right open. I'm, very, I'm trying my best to stop cussing because I want to sound more intelligent and also because I want my speech to be pure and edifying like it's supposed to be. I keep hearing her say, fa. I can use that because that's an expression of excitement or, or bewilderment or surprise. I can use that and it's still close to something I'm familiar with. I'm going to use that moving forward to display what I need to display with it. Fa. Is it F-A or F-U-A? Let me know in the comment section. Got seven holes in my body. Okay. I've got some iced water and then plain ice cubes. Oh my gosh, don't... Seven, seven holes in his body. Two more, he would have been 50 cent. <laughs> well, that's a general idea, don't we? Yeah. It's, it's really cold. Oh, I'm scared. I'm just take a little sip, it'll be fine. Poor kid, man. Oh my gosh, I think I'm dying. No. He said he thinks he's dying, and he's like, nah. Weird. Cold. No, not cold. It's a little bit like, it's like it can't fit. I can't cuss you, but I love you, Stan. You still got your poker and it's still fair. Yeah, love you. Love you too. Look good, my baby. The day after surgery at night. They were all expecting me to like get up and walk around. I'm like far out. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared something's gonna rip and they're like, no, nah, you're supposed to do it. I'm like, it doesn't feel like I'm supposed to do it. Mm. got a message from Dr. Kwong. He said, um, you're doing well, need to wait for formal pass result, but quietly confident that all cancer is out. It takes time for you to adjust to new stomach. 
morphine. Are you don't? More morphine. Get Just my boy more morphine. I'm still not feeling anything. That'd have been me. Comfortable. That'd have been me, bro. Pump me up. I'm going to. You don't know, mum. Stop telling tell me what I'm feeling. You said. Yeah, but it's sore sometimes. Bro, I'd be just like that. Bro, I cannot stand pain. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I will do everything everything humanly possible to avoid pain. It's probably why I'm unsuccessful. I just want to have a big skull of that water. for a walk now. Oh boy. First walk for Stanley. There he is. <laughs> okay, sorry. It's only fun when he can make fun. Just gonna do it, you know. So your body doesn't shut down. This is the whole reason why you're walking. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just slow though, don't, don't. I'm okay, I'm shut up. Okay. <laughs> He's so groggy. Oh, man. I thought the hard part was over, but things were just going to get worse. I can feel my body going through stresses right now as I'm watching this, <laughs> watching him go through this. Two days ago, I contracted a um, horrible, I had it from the beginning, really. Started getting a chest infection. And uh, so one of my lungs collapsed and it's just, you know, oh, all these complications. And I feel like I'm gonna suffocate sometimes. The more I lie down, the more I feel sick. I have fevers every night before I go to bed. I wouldn't wish this on anybody, to be honest. I just have to thank God every day that I'm alive, you know. That this is going to be for the better. Because, to be honest, I feel like giving up every day. It's, it's just it's too much. It's draining. Came into the room, tried to get changed, and I started shivering. My hands went pure white. My face went like white like a dead person. And I started like seizing up my jaw, my neck, my whole body. It wasn't like a seizure, it was like I just clamped up like, I don't know. Anyway, God was good. I'm getting there. Bruh, bruh, you, you can't but have, you can't have but anything but respect for this man's spirit, bruh. And the way he thanks God and Jesus, even in this probably the worst time of his life i don't know what else he's been through but this has got to be one of the worst things sheesh man just ran in the room and his whole face was gray and his lips were white his hands were white his fingers were white he was like freezing and and the father oh my gosh he was standing there freaking out crying i suppose the mum is always the strong one because we have the kids look after them take all the crap that they give us and all this jazz but we're not as strong as people think we are we're human and you know like it's very hard seeing your kid like that i still feel real crap and you know i don't know what's happening inside of me i don't know if all the cancer's gone yet feels like it's been forever since i've had my stomach out it's starting to come good um still struggling with the food but i want to go and yeah Looks go check out to see if it's all good and see if all the cancer's gone and hopefully it is and hopefully i can start eating properly hey how are you so he has no stomach okay they connected his esophagus to his intestines so they removed the stomach he has no stomach okay very well good to see, good to see you doesn't even look as if it's been fun. Yeah, fantastic. And it will get better and better. 
Yeah, yeah. Then in fact, the whole stomach came out through the belly button. I know. It's pretty amazing. You had, before the biopsy, one spot, but there were multiple small cancer spots, okay? On multiple? Yeah, yeah. There's 13 um, small spots. More importantly is that they haven't spread beyond uh, where they are. So none of the lymph nodes that are retrieved have any evidence of cancer. So it's very localized. We got it all clear margin because we got the whole stomach. So yeah. don't, don't, oh, don't yeah. you worry. And uh, there's no signs of spread anywhere, right? It's cure. So, you know, you should not have to worry at all ever again about the risk of gastric cancer. So I can sound cancer Praise free. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Praise Jesus. Me too, I got my results the other day. <laughs> cancer free, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise I need Jesus. to get my body back because I need to teach myself how to sing again. Yes. Which is like quite scary because I have no control over my voice. Yes. Like I can sing, but like I can't sing. Yeah. I can't sing a full song. Mm. I tried to, I was getting tired mm. um, and my voice ain't the same. And so that's quite scary for me. Sure. That takes a bit of time because you need to have the energy level that you yeah. require, okay? And the stamina too, isn't it? Because yeah. singing requires a lot of stamina, right? Yeah. So now it's retrain yourself. At least from the stomach cancer point of view, got it really early in time for yeah. you. And now you don't have to worry anymore. Yes. All right. I'm gonna die. Yeah. Good. So worth doing. Okay. Worth oh, doing. Thank you so much. So, thank you. Right, good, good thank job. you. Wow. You're the man. Thank okay, you. Okay. Good job. Okay. Thank you for saving my life. No worries. Yes. Thank thank you. Right. The only thing that I'm worrying about now is singing. Well, like, guess what, boys? I'm cancer free. <laughs> we just got back from the doctors. Yeah, and um, like I had my appointment on Monday and I'm cancer free. Oh, true. Yeah, and Stan had his appointment today and when they checked his stomach and stuff, they found 13 lesions of cancer. But he, lesions of cancer. But they got it all out and he's cancer free too. Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> I could have been dead in six months to a year if we didn't get it checked. Yeah, fully. All right. Just an avatar at the last airbender. I love it. God, he would have been on stage singing and then drop. <laughs> now that he's heard the news, oh, he's going to perk up. Yeah, he is. He is. Oh, there he goes. Lost a bit of weight. For All right. Mm. Congratulations. You got no cancer on you. No. Yeah. Far no. out. I'm just thinking about far out if you hadn't made this decision, eh? You'd be yeah. still walking around with it, yeah. not knowing. Hey, right. I could be one. Scary. Aren't you going to get checked? No. Nah. Nah. Your husband needs to get tested, man. No. He's too scared. He's just going to die. You all right? He will. He'll just die. He doesn't want to know. He's too scared. Throw up. <laughs> yeah, you about to throw up. <laughs> right how weird is that i was imagining what his response was going to be and how why his eyes were going to get when he realized he was being watched just now but this reaction is much better he was surprised but then he he processed it very quickly it's like bro don't catch me in these vulnerable moments but also at the same time people need to see this so they understand what i've been through i get it man ah oh, oof <laughs> I love how he's all smiles. Stan, do you have to spit on the sink? No, Reminds me of Ian in that way. I just come up. I can't tell it. Oh, don't come up. Yeah, well, I have a spitting bowl. <laughs> you shouldn't be here. Are you alright? Oh, it's just the, all the food stuck in there. Sometimes I spew up, spew up all my food. Have a drink of water and get it. No, if it makes it worse. I'll just keep spewing up. Flip the donuts Sometimes. over here, please. Coffee. Stan, can you put the tongue on, please? Lovely, Stan. Yeah, I'm happy Poor for you. You know, all that stress you've been going through, man, far out. Cancer free, which is amazing, but I'm still not feeling good. So I've got to go for a routine checkup tomorrow.
they were going to do a, another scoping down in his stomach to see if the esophagus and everything was healing properly. I got a call from Dr. Diong telling me that his esophagus was narrowing. Stan's been complaining about he can't swallow properly some things and he also uh, has been bringing up stuff, you know. I was only supposed to come in for a routine thing and then go home and now it's, it's just like escalated into this big thing where I'm stuck in hospital now for like, I don't know, five, six days or however long I'm here. Jeez. Like, uh, I knew it was going to be a mental battle. I knew it. Bro, the instant feeling of regret and did I do the right thing and oh my goodness. I was just going to be like this though. I wasn't prepared. No one prepared me enough for all these setbacks. I had so much hope yesterday. Today is a different day. Mm. I don't have that hope I did yesterday. I'm just like, ugh. I feel defeated. <laughs> what frightens me about it is that, you know, like, cause my father had the same operation and they couldn't um, uh, connect his esophagus back to his bowel because it was a weak. And I know Stan, you know, is, is young and healthy and strong and stuff, but, you know, it's still very, you know. Everything's going wrong. Everything. I don't think I can mentally handle it. This is tiring. I feel like I'm not living my purpose. Like, oh, you know, I was starting to try and sing every day and warm up. Like, this is just another step back. It's frustrating. Frustrating is. It's Thursday. I won't be out till, like, Monday or Tuesday. With nothing going in my mouth besides liquids going in my veins. Of course, I'm going to lose weight. So I just hopefully I don't lose my strength. Like, you know, I don't want to be um, struggling to just get up. Like, that's it's quite scary. scary. It feels like I'm dying in a way. Like, I don't know. I just, yeah, never thought I'd be like this. This is so sad, man. Give him rest tonight, Lord God. Comfort, Lord God. Father, I pray you speak to him in his sleep, Lord God. Lord God, let him breathe. Father, you breathe fresh new life into him right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Jesus. We trust you, Lord God, with our baby, Lord. And we thank you, Father, in heaven, that you just keep him safe in Jesus' name. Speedy recovery, God. Yes, God, thank you, Jesus. Cover his mind, God. Yes, Lord. And we just lose your power, God. Amen. Not after this. Not after this. No, I don't, I, no, I don't want to. I'm thinking to myself that I'm just going to eat properly, eat better for my stomach, you know. Um, my breast has um, uh, been taken care of with hormone pills and I'm just going to um, look after myself and try not to have emotional stress like this. Easier said than done, babe. I got four incisions in my stomach. Oh, I, was, I, was, uh, I was in a lot of pain when I got out. I didn't have appendicitis, they didn't know what's wrong with me. Just sit back after sit back. I don't think I'm listening to my body properly. Just waking up. Oh gosh, my throat is so sore. Oh, I'm still like drowsy from the drugs and all this stuff. And, and I don't have to stay in the hospital. I can go home. Um, you don't have to do this one. No, it's good. Yes. I can go home, which means I'm gonna go to New Zealand. <laughs> My 
my marae, that's my standing ground, that's my tūrana wai wai. There's something about being on your own marae, it's, it's like a, literally, it's like you're getting powered up. I can imagine. I love that's how I feel when I go to the beach. I feel like that's the closest thing to being back in Barbados is when I get to go to the beach. And that's where I get my recharge and my perspective, my reset. The Urupa, to the cemetery to go and see my family, see my koko, see all our loved ones that have died over the years. That means a lot for me. There's many graveyards where a lot of our uh, brothers and sisters and relations have died, and uh, there's quite a few uh, cancer victims here. So here, this is my father. He died of cancer. How old was he, Robbie? 66. This uh, this girl here is my niece. Yes. Uh, you can see by her age, uh, 17. She's 17 here. years old. Another, another relation there died. I guess 20 years on, you know, the gene is still passed down. People are still getting cancer. I've just felt like there's just been this big mate on our hill, like it, like it was like a curse, you know, of death. You feel it when you go past the hill, when you're coming onto the hill. This is my Koro George's house. All the original owners from here up are all dead. So it's my nan's brother. He's dead now from the gene. Him and my grandfather were the first two to get the operations. It's my Auntie Mary's. She died too of the gene. She had the stomach cancer. This is Nanny Pat, my nan's sister. She's dead. Auntie Hira, my nan's other sister. She died from cancer. Good my grief. uncle died from cancer and then my other two cousins died. Auntie White Girl, she died. She was only 35. That's our old house. We all lived there. There was no fences back then. That house there, that's our homestead, my great-grandmother's house. That's the one that had the 23 kids in there. I love 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 how all his family is that he can drive to all his family his family is right here and they all live next to each other i don't know how big the cuts are between the houses but it's just amazing that he can get to all of his family in one or a lot of his family in a single drive i don't think i've ever seen anybody i've never seen anybody die and i've never seen i've never had anybody super close to me die my grandfather is dead my granddad but i didn't know him like that felt nothing when he passed i think something's wrong with me but also i've i've given myself grace in the fact that i don't have the same level of attachment to people and things because i used to get moved around a lot as a kid not a military kid or nothing like that but just always when the lease was up it'd be i'd be i'd move damn near every year and so I got used to not getting attached and not caring if relationships ended. And I guess I guess that solidified and grew as I grew up, but I've never been affected by anybody's death and nobody's death has been close enough to me that I've been affected. And even if I believe right now, if somebody close to me died, I, I, I don't think I'd have a normal reaction I think I'd have a dissociate, whatever a dissociative person would do, I feel like I'd do that. It's just me. Dead. That, that house has seen so much death. Yeah, this whole home, we've all been struck by this ugly curse, this ugly gene. Whether, you know, people have got the gene or got the cancer and died. It's quite sad because it's all my mum and dad's family, or the whole hill is, but, you know, we've just watched everyone die. I've watched everyone die and then there's so many before me my uncle fiddy is supposed to get a stomach out but he is the same as mum they're scared because all they can think about is my grandfather and how he died and how it never worked for him that i overstand that I overstand their fears, but they should also look at you and how you came through. There's an example of good and an example of bad. Both are there. I hope, I hope that they can heal themselves through proper eating and, and, and taking care of themselves. And I can't blame them. You know, I was a kid and it still scars me. It still hurts me. But that was their dad and they had to watch that. He's 
you know, and he, he'd done it for everybody to have the test and all that, eh, you know, and it just went all downhill from there, man. They tried to reattach his esophagus with his small intestine. It didn't work. He was unconscious for probably two weeks from there. Dad was pretty bad by then. Doctors and nurses telling us it's time to pull the plug, you know. And I didn't want Stan to see him like that. And, uh, I didn't make it to Stan. I think just seen his face. He ran and he went, go, 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 go. And I saw everything, could smell him, and he just, that was the worst part. He started backing off from us. So I grabbed him and I took him outside and I blew my sister up for letting that happen. Yeah, it was still scary. It's still fresh in us, eh? Yeah. Because that it was is. our I dad. Still, he was I our still life. I cry. Man. still cry when I think about that. Yeah. He was yeah, our life. Know. Even though we had our own lives, dad was still our. Yeah. Praise God for the new knowledge and technology they have now. Yeah. Back in the days, everybody just thought that the hill was cursed. There was a makutsu or something, you know, we were all cursed. But my auntie Maybell and auntie Pauline, they thought that there was more to it than just a curse or like these ugly things because it just kept happening through the generations, the same kind of cancer and they were dying the same way. So they went looking. The whole thing comes from a sister and a brother marrying a brother and a sister in our side. The whole gene thing. Yeah. My papa's line comes from this side. Yeah, oh. And yeah. then, and also papa and mum come from this side. It's complicated because... They went back and forth? I don't want like to say, but he, yeah, well, he went back and forth. You don't have to say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a bit of a difference. Um, quite related down here. We're just following the traditions, you know? You marry within the land, keep the land strong. We have kept our land strong. <laughs> so these are all the cancer? Yeah. Oh. The ones that are colored in black are, are the ones. I saw somebody say in the comments the other day that we're all cuzzies or cuzzies cuzzies or cuzzies cuzzies of cuzzies. You wasn't playing, was you? Huh. Died of cancer, but that's only up to a certain point. See, they didn't have a real shit show, really, because they didn't have anything to help them. Back in 1994, I knew there was something wrong with the family. Because she was a nurse at the time, she thought there was something wrong. So she went searching, she went looking for answers and trying to find a way to find out what was happening in our family, why everybody was dying from the same cancer. Wow. So my auntie Maybell contacted Otago University and, and Dr. Perry to see if they could help find out what was happening in our family. Back in 1996, 101 people volunteered to go into this exercise of giving their blood. We had to collect tissues from the hospital. Or from Fano who died. Yeah, from Fano who died. I know. I know, but that's how it goes. You know, I, I did say to people, I don't like what we're doing. It's not very Maori, but we had to do it so that out of the, the scientists can find the mutation. They had to get the tissue from their bodies, like use their body parts. For Māori, that's tapu e, it's like you don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, some people probably wouldn't agree with it, but at the same time, that's the world we live in today. We, we have to do that, otherwise we're just going to die. And we're just going to die proud going, no, we did it the Māori way. It's like, <gasps> I don't want to die. I'm hati Māori, but I don't, I don't want to die. So what happened was, they said it's going to take five to ten years to find this one. Eighteen months later, bang. After wandering for so long what it was that was killing their family, the McLeods now suddenly had the answer. A tiny hiccup in the gene sequence. And this discovery is the first time ever that a gene has been discovered for inherited stomach cancer. Imagine if I left it, I would have been dead in like a year. I don't want to, because it's the same thing. Oh, I'll be all right. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Too late, and I would have been dead at 27. That's why you fellas have to do it. Because yeah. you're going to be like Kupo right, and Steve. young and, and something happens. And then it's too late. It has no mercy. You know, like I'm 53, he died at 55, and I'm like, my esophagus might be weak. 
like his yeah. was and it's a role model for your kids. For the children. Don't wait for the kids to say they'll have it first. Yeah. Right. April. We, He'd we rather born. do that than bloom and die. Dang. You gotta swallow your fear, Ma. You gotta be a good example at this point. What a tough position to be in. Having to overcome that same fear that pretty much has been in the background. Not not disappearing, not dissipating, just as strong as it's ever been in the background, just lingering. Ugh. And then having to consider even in this moment going forward in spite of that feeling. Ugh. Ugh, man. Good grief what this family has been through. Not even Stan. Stan as an individual, but his whole family. Is, this is wild. And for it to come from Us here, oh. But what are you waiting for? This is for both of you, because you're both scared and stubborn. But man, like you said, like you'd rather go through that three months of like, you know, might be intense recovery, but like to like another thirty more years of living. Yeah. Because yeah. what if next year you got cancer and it's like, oh, shit, too late. Dang! Now he can be the spokesperson for this. Wow. And I hope that Dr. Duong Guang has gotten a lot more patients that he's saved because if I ever found I got cancer, I want to go to Stan Walker's doctor that, that saved his life. What do you mean? I was going to go for his checkup to see, you know, if everything's good in there, get a scope. Good stuff. Hopefully these tests come back negative and everything's good. Even then, he's still got to get a stomach out. I'm definitely more confident, you know, listening to Stan and that and, and realising it is 17 years since the old man had it. So, you know. Bruh, bruh, he went through this. Because he was strong enough to go through it. Jesus put it on him so he could go through this. So that he could inspire the rest of his family to do what they probably should have done. But the fear of losing someone nullified that desire to be better. This is insane. Bruh, it only takes one. It only takes one. And that one is Jesus. And whoever follows him... That's somebody that you need to follow to him so that you can get to him on your own and follow him directly. But until then, follow somebody that you know follows him very closely until you can develop your own relationship, bruh. This is wild to see how Stan saved his family by being the one to get cancer. What an insane series of words. That's God for you. <laughs> oh, well, okay, I'm, I'm definitely going to get my stomach out next year. Now I'm just going to tell my kids I'm going to get it done. I'm pretty stoked that my uncle's going to get a stomach out. It's up to my mum now. I think it's harder for my mum because she was there through everything with me and my grandfather, and it's not been good. Here we go. Focus on your breathing now, Jen. The only reason why I'm actually alive is because I got myself checked. And at the same time, it wasn't because I wanted to. It's because my mum forced me to. And I thank God she did. I so thank you had God to return the favor. Always because I'm alive. And that's what the rest of my family need to do. They need to go and get checked. Okay, so Damn, that's going to make me go and get checked. It's genetic. It's going to happen whether we like it or not. So it's like right. we got to take action and start to look after ourselves. You know, I love what I come from and who I come from and being Māori. But also, you know, this is a different world and we never had cancer back in the days. And so we're going to have to do things. 
because y'all ate pure from the land. But then colonization happened and you started eating processed foods. Yeah, this is disgusting and beautiful and so many different emotions, man. Uh, I'm not necessarily Maori. Well done, all finished. That all looked healthy. There are no abnormalities there. Good stuff. Science is incredible, like how advanced they are today to what my grandparents went through. We're living in completely different worlds. Yeah, we're living in the future, bub. It's all because you, man, like, uh, I just talked to you for a, for a week. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, Uncle. It's mean, man, if uh, we're all going to be alive a lot longer than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Look at that. That's be that's a beautiful thing, man. It's gonna be good. He just saved his uncle's life. <laughs> Vitamin D shots for the rest okay. of his life because his stomach's relaxed. Oh, what a faint. Shots. Should lie back then. Uh, you can't give him a pill? In like less than 10 days. Jeez, it's like a week away. Oh my gosh, it's a week away today, so seven days. Snow's popping in a nice and slow, are you okay? Oh shit, yeah. I don't know how that's gonna go. Um, I've tested my voice and it doesn't come out the way I want it to. Don't rub that site for a while, okay? I'm just gonna put the plaster on. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, no, I'm right. I just hate needles. Me too. One of the hardest things right now is just trying to sing. Just nothing's like happening, nothing's coming out. And it is the most frustrating thing because that's. That's what I do. That's it. That, like that, that's me. Dang. Okay, I'm gonna try and give it a go. I didn't want to try, man, because the last time I tried, it didn't come out, and I just was just a second. Bruh, how to see this struggle that this magnificent artist is going through, it really puts into perspective how there sh should be no excuses. There should be no reason that you are not trying and striving for what you want in this life, whatever that may be. To see him be a phenomenal singer, then not have the ability to sing and have him to retrain himself to sing, this almost makes me feel like if I gave it a go, I might be able to do it. I really love singing. And I don't do it well. But seeing this, it's like he trained his voice. Why can't I train mine? We're both humans. We both got voices. I won't be able to sound like him. I'll sound like me. But it's just interesting that to think that sometimes people are just have God given talent and that they don't have to try and that they don't have to struggle Seeing this is like, wow, no, no, no. Even that person that is successful, has made it, is going through or has gone through the very same struggle that potentially you're going through at this moment in the beginning stages. So many times I find myself having montage brain where you see the struggle, rise, and success of the nothing to hero in all the movies. Two hours, they get this montage scene in the middle, and all of a sudden, they're who they're supposed to be. Real life isn't like that at all. And it's been messing with me and my ability to progress because... Hard work is hard <laughs> and montages make it look easy and it's not. And so, yeah, man, it's just inspiring to see him struggle 
It's inspiring to see somebody great struggle. And I don't I, normally I mean that negatively. Normally I do. I can't even lie to I won't lie to you. Normally I mean that in a very hateristic way, but I mean that in the most positive way I can say it. It's different hearing stories from rich people and people that have made it. It's different watching them in that moment. Watching their struggle, watching their thought process on their face, feeling their 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 feelings in that moment. It's different than reading a book or hearing a story. That's my big comeback concert. Nobody knows because nobody knows that I've been down and out, had cancer, got my gut out. Hopefully my voice shows out. You said even though this is meant for me because I haven't performed for a long time. I'm going to cut this one here and we're going to do the last 15 minutes in the next video because this is a whole lot. It's a whole lot. And I want to make sure that it's taken in manageable doses 